Hello, so something amazing happens every now and again on YouTube. I got a comment the other day trying to insult me, calling me an idiot who didn't know anything. But in this guy's random rant and tirade, which, you know, I, I block as I always do, uh, he actually asked kind of a question in there, because it was funny, it's one of those people that says, you're so wrong about everything, haha, <laughs> I know how something works. But then he kind of proposed a question in it, like he didn't really know. So... What he was basically saying is, I'm an idiot because don't I know that 40mm filters can't be changed if there's gas. The only mask where you can change the filters is the GSR and M50 because they have bayonet filters. Um, and he did kind of bring up an interesting question there. And what I think the question is, is what are the advantages of a mask like this? Because as already the GSR is hurting being on my face because they decided to put an uncomfortable bit of plastic in the bottom that pushes into your jaw. Uh, can I pull it down and make it a bit more comfortable? Maybe. Uh, that's not quite as bad like that, but it's still not comfortable. But, um, you know, I thought that did raise an interesting point. So, um, what I'm going to do, I don't know. Yeah, it's still sealed. Um, what I'm going to do now is basically explain why bayonet filters kind of have an advantage. Now, if you actually had a mask like the M50, I presume, and not the GSR, where it's made to a higher quality standard and more lightweight, these advantages would be even more so, but for this bit, we can explain this fairly easily. So, if you see on the side of the mask here, that's where the bayonet bit connects. Now, underneath these, as I've said before, if you remove this bit of the tool or by breaking it off, there's a 40mm filter port underneath, but the GSR actually uses these weird bayonet filters, and the idea is that you can see the actual filter there. So, how these work is this bit is like a key on the bayonet. It pushes into that bit. When it's pushed into that bit, it opens the airflow. So when you take the filters off a of GSI, you can't actually breathe, which is really interesting. Because if you see I do that, the mask compresses. So that's kind of a clever design choice. The idea is basically that with a GSR, if I was to take the filter off um, to change it, I can still breathe through the other filter, um, with, you know, without having it on, which you can't do with a 40mm mask with two filters on unless you, you know, choose to put your hand over one or whatever at the time, because, um, obviously, this stops any gas getting in, and it means you can leisurely change the filter. However, you could still do that with just one filter on it, but the point is that there's no risk of inhaling gas when you're doing it. But, of course, the thing is, with a 40mm filter, it is still very easy to hold your breath and change the filter. That was always the way people were trained to do it, but apparently, you know, that goes over some people's heads. Oh, you can hold your breath? I didn't know the human body could do that. But yeah. Uh, so obviously, like I said, these bayonet filters, the idea is, and like I think these are really annoying to actually get to connect to the mask properly. Um, so if I just wiggle that around enough there, maybe I'll find where it's meant to be going on. There we go. So the point is with these filters that I put on backwards in the shooting position, which it doesn't really even help for shooting. The point is with these filters that when they're in this position, you can breathe. When they're in this position, well, it's still sort of connected. You know, but the point is when they're on the mask, it's easier to breathe them when they're off the mask because you've got an extra airflow. So. You know, that is a good thing in, with these masks, I will say that, despite there not being many good features about them, that I like the idea that, you know, when you're changing the filter, there's no risk of inhaling gas. Because there's a point some people have come up with, which I think is a very loose argument, but I want to give them some credit for them, because they've come up with an interesting idea. So let me take off this horrible mask, and now I'm going to suddenly switch to a better mask to demonstrate something on it for you. Back to the good old S10. Now, I can actually demonstrate what people are on about here, so... Let's say, let's say you've taken your filter off, you're holding your breath, you've got your new filter to put on, it's contaminated, there's gas everywhere. People have said that what happens with you're putting your filter on and then gas gets caught in this little pocket here on top of the filter where there's a gap. So that's a good point. So let's say I'm holding my breath, so I've just gone, taking the last filter off, now I'm just doing this. So what do I do now? Well, what I do is I breathe out really hard. Well, that's as hard as I could do that, because I obviously had the mask on and everything, but um, one of the things I do would prefer on the S10 is if there was an exhale valve you could easily block for the purpose of purging the mask, but it's called purging the mask. 
And if you look at old US training videos when they had the M9 masks, purging the mask was actually something they demonstrated how to do in the video. So the idea is, let's say you've just put your mask on, you've had to change the filter. What you do is, when you've got a lung full of clean air, you breathe out really hard. And what that does is it pushes the air inside the mask out because of the negative pressure design of a respirator. So the air inside is forced out. So why is that a good thing? Well, obviously any poison gas in the mask has been forced out now. If it was something as deadly as nerve agent, which will, can also kill you through skin contact, I could actually see the point of this um, in terms of, you know, worrying about that tiny bit of gas in there. However, you would be issued atropine, uh, so you could use that if you think there's a risk. But remember, with a respirator on, most people are taught uh, in various places that with respirators you use them to evacuate. You don't, you know, sit around with them. So, the other thing is that guy was making the argument that if you had two filters, it means you can change the filters safely. Well, that wouldn't always apply, because M17s and cheek filter masks have two filters, but you can't change the filters on them safely. So it's not a feature of two filters, it's the design of the filter. And again, it wouldn't work with 40mm, that design, really, as I said in that other video where he made the dumb, you know, dumb comment. Um, so yeah, but yeah, as the guy was saying, so with this mask, the method of changing the filter is big breath in, Take a filter off. <sighs> New filter on, close your mask, breathe. So, again, that kind of is a bit easier, I think, with the GSR. Well, not that it's a good mask, and I really hate the fiddly bayonet system. But, you know, that you can leisurely change your filter at your own pace on each side. La la la. Well, you do it. Now, I actually think I, if I said, if I was personally using a GSR, um, I wouldn't use that how the British Army recommends, which is have two filters on. I just have the filter on the left side so I can shoot properly on the right side. And, um, you know, just switch the filter as and when I need it on the left side. It also means your filters last a bit longer because you've got more filters. Now, I've heard the stupid argument as well that you need two filters on a gas mask because if you only have one, that filter runs out faster. And as I've said before, the issue is that, yes, if you have two equally sized filters on a the mask, then the load is spread between the two filters, so that's a good thing, right? The issue is that each of those filters is expiring at roughly the same time, so it's, you get a filter that both filters last longer and both filters run out at once. Um, you know, if you only had one filter and it lasted half the time and you need to change it and you had to do one spare filter, at least you know I really need to get out of here now. Because however long that first filter lasted, I've got about the same amount of time again. So, you know, there's that. So, let's just switch back to the GSR again. Okay, I'm back to this marvel of engineering. So, mask seems to pressurise. So, again, if I take this off, I can't actually breathe, can I? So then what I need to do is get this on before I suffocate. Now, you see I've killed myself now because um, it's just too hard to change the filters on this mask. Let's try again. Now I'm dead again. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do the stupid two filter thing so I can change a filter at my leisure because of the stupid system for putting the filters on this mask. So let's go. Yeah, fuck this. Right, let's test this again then. So if I was to change the filter and I had both filters on there, I can still breathe through that side, so I can do this as leisurely as I want, or I try and hit this filter against the mask and get it on. Went on easy that time, so let's just try it again with the left filter. So I'll make sure I take a very big breath in first, because I don't want to suffocate. So reaching for the new filter. There we go. So, as I said, the problem with this design is, as good as the bayonet system is in theory, you know, because you're only ever going to be, in, there's no risk you can inhale um, air with poison gas in it, 
the issue is you're just going to suffocate instead. Now, like I said, the issue actually is, is it's just really hard to line the bayonets up properly, so... It doesn't really guide itself in, so what I'd love to know from people who have the Avon M50, for example, is, is it easier to put the filters on? I really hope so. Because the filters on this are a real pain in the ass, because they just... If you see there, it's just a really weird system for lining it up. Like, that time it's gone on quite easily, but other times you're just sort of going... Of course, now I've done it, it's just going to keep working for this time, but... Again, it's probably easier to change that one because I'm right-handed. Let's just do this one again. Right, let's do the uh, gas test again where um, I can't actually breathe. So, filter's running out. cheated then so I looked in the viewfinder to see what I was doing but again this is a system where in theory it's great like a lot of things of the GSR in theory it's great but in practicality it doesn't work all that well so anyway that's the advantage of the bayonet system in theory is that there's no way poison gas can actually get in when you change the filter so you know in theory it's great but as I said the problem is um it's really awkward to put on. Also, a thing I've mentioned as well with this mask is, I don't know if this is the same with the M50 again, but the amount of airflow you can get through one of these bayonet filter type fittings is a lot less than you get through a single 40mm. So you actually need two filters on this to equal about what you can breathe through one 40mm. Probably two is a bit more than one 40mm, but you get my gist. That with only one filter on this mask, it's actually really difficult to breathe, uh, especially if you're exercising, where I did that video the other day. Um, with most masks I wouldn't have an issue at all, but with this one it does, I can, you know, if you're holding something heavy, you actually notice a lot more you can't breathe very well. So there you go. Um, also, how sturdy would the bayonets be on this filter? I don't know. Because um, what I'd hate is for you to be trying to do that in the middle of a situation where you need it and then something snaps off and your mask's compromised. With 40mm, the filters and the sockets are normally quite sturdy. With this thing, I don't really know. So, there you go. In theory, bayonet filters are a great system. In reality, not so much. But again, it's something that I think if a system like this was really perfected for military use, I can see them being much better than a 40mm filter. But we're not quite there yet, that's the problem.